Hi, this is Frank Rodriguez Villela, and I'm here to interview a great friend of mine. And it's true, it's a great friend. We've known each other for many years. And uh, I, uh, I usually when I conduct interviews, it's, I'm, I'm really blessed that I, I know these great, great musicians uh, all over the country. And I can say I work with Mike. I work, we worked together on the road. We did a lot of, uh, a lot of playing, but Mike has had a, a great career. Worked with uh, Dr. Dre, did stuff for NWA, Cypress Hills, right? Mm, Cypress yeah. Hills. You did some stuff for Michael Bolton too, right? Uh, I played live with Michael Bolton. Okay, so you, know, you did some uh, live gigs and this stuff with Patty Austin, mm -hmm. is that right? Patty yeah. Austin and also worked yeah. with... Um, uh, George Benson. George Benson. So, Richard you know, for, for you guitar players, George Benson is the cat, you know. And I have a cat here that worked with him, which is a, a great... Uh, Great honor for for you, right? It must have been a great experience. And <laughs> yeah, I thought it would, I thought they were joking when they, they got that <laughs> phone call. Actually, I was like, you got to be kidding. Me. So Mike is a definitely a seasoned player, and uh, and it's just uh, a great honor to be able to sit, uh, be here in Redondo Beach, California, and get to uh, <laughs> interview him and talk to him about uh, just what inspired him to start music and uh, and I guess guitar. We're guitar players, right? So we. Uh, but uh, what what inspired you to to start music? Well, the, you know, the first instrument I wanted to play was the trombone, and it was because I saw this uh, other upperclassman when I was in kindergarten or first grade at my public school uh, Monday 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 morning assembly, and uh, I was just fascinated with the whole sliding action, and I just thought it was like fascinating. And so it was it was a performance that they were yeah playing. yeah it was the school band okay and uh, I just zeroed in on the trombone and immediately had like these visions of stardom you know <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's like to me it's the instrument is a beautiful sound instrument because I loved it yeah. but did you uh, so how old were you when you heard that would probably I was probably like in first grade first grade yeah, so Isn't that amazing. Like, like yeah, so like young, six years you old, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, did you feel? Uh, so, did you try to uh, study trombone or play? Oh no, no, not at all. It was just some thing that happened in my head. Really, it was um, and I didn't follow through with it. But uh, then I got interested in the guitar because I must have seen Gene Autry or something, right, some right. cowboy on a horse right, playing right. guitar, and I thought that was totally cool and. It became the guitar after that. Yeah. What year was that when you started? Um, what year was I like fascinated with the, the cowboys? guitar? Yeah, the cowboys. Oh, okay, that was probably not long after that. Probably first or second grade. You know, Saturday morning television. And so, do you ask your parents? Oh, I want to play like that guy. Did you any lessons? Or yeah, anything? I kind of made some overtures about. Oh, I'd love to get a guitar. And then I got a guitar for my birthday, or Christmas. It was like a. I think it was like a St. George nylon string. Okay, okay. It kind of sat in the corner. And then there was a lady down the street that showed me a couple of chords. I think she showed me a D chord and an A7 chord and maybe a G chord. And I learned Puff the Magic Dragon okay. or something. And, you know, and, then, um, and then rock and roll happened. Okay, that's uh, right. So yeah. well, that's obviously what Beatles, Beatles and stuff. Yeah, you know, I got a radio, I think, for Christmas. And the radio was always on. And... Um, I used to sneak home from school during lunch to listen to the radio with my mom. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Huh? And I, one of my fondest memories of that was, it was the Supremes. It was Baby Love came on the radio. Oh, my yeah. mom said, that's going to be a hit song. She was like, <laughs> she loved that song. <laughs> so, you know, it's so funny because my mom played music too. And so when my mom played, and this is like um, sort of amazing because I just started talking to other people and it's... Uh, you know, obviously our fathers can help us to, you know, um, support us in a different way. But what our moms like, I think as musicians, I see it like a very common thing where, you know, when my mom did this and then next, thing you know, she's taking me to lessons. So not that dads don't do it. Don't get me wrong. Dads do a lot of that stuff. But it's sort of amazing that the moms had such a big Definitely. inspiration, you know. Definitely. Another thing that used to happen in our house, too, is at Christmas time. My mom would put a stack of Christmas records on the on the stereo, you know, and they'd drop down one at a time. And I used to lie down on the floor in front of it and just listen to Christmas songs. Right, right. And that would be going on all day, every day, you know, a week, two weeks before Christmas through New Year's. Right, right. And um, 
I remember falling asleep on the floor listening to Christmas carols. Once you started getting inspired and listening, was there any, any did you just go to any particular school to learn any? Uh, no, about? no, I was just in public school and um, I guess when I was in junior high, a lot of my friends played guitar or bass or drums and they would have, you know, garage jam sessions after school and I would watch. Right. And um, I really wanted to get involved with that. And um, oh, I finally acquired a really, uh, it was a Filipino um, knockoff of a Stratocaster. <laughs> and the middle pickup was a dummy pickup. It was a, it was a real junker, but yeah. I got that guitar. And um, I had a friend kind of show me, he'd say, well, put your fingers here between these two frets and oh. kind of walk me through a sort of a pentatonic pattern. And he goes, well, that's playing an A. And, so it's and somebody here's playing an E. So it was know? by watching and, and people helping you. Yeah. So you never did like a formal instructions or anything? Not till later. Not till later. It was pretty much uh, my friends showed me a few things and that kind of got me enough to get going on my own. And I watched um, other guys I knew. You know, they would needle drop and and learn oh, songs yeah. by listening to the listening so you, to a record. So and by I this point, that. Like middle school? Were you in middle school? Then? Yeah, that was more like. Um, early high school by early that time. Yeah. So I was listening to, you know, it was Cream, I think, that really inspired me. You know, right, I, right. I came home from school one day and my brother was playing Disraeli Gears and I was, what is that? You know, and it was, <laughs> you know, it was Clapton playing through a wah wah on some song, oh, yeah, Tales yeah. of Brave Ulysses that's or something, right, that's and right. I was completely blown away. So you're, was, how old was your brother? Uh, my brother's like five years older than I was. Okay. So, you know, I was, uh, Probably at ninth grade, and he was probably a uh, senior in high school yeah. at that point, something like that. So sort of in, in, incredible how you're, uh, you know, you're old. If you have older siblings, you know, along with your, you know, lovely mother, help, you know, <laughs> playing music, you know, do you you sort of listen to what your brothers listen to. Well, that's what got me started, yeah. And then the, what I heard on the radio too. I used to love to listen to the radio. Yeah, you know, it was always on. And I used to sneak home from school at lunchtime yeah. from my elementary school just to listen to the radio and eat a peanut butter jelly <laughs> sandwich with my mom and then rush back to school. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's, that's you know, that's, uh, I mean, and, and, I, mean, I uh, that radio, I mean, it's just sort of because, you know, for us it was, and then some people will say, well, it was FM radio. But it was like a lot of AM radio. Yeah, this was AM radio. AM back radio in those had, days. had yeah, a lot of yeah. music. And the stations played everything. You know, one station you'd hear Elvis, then you'd hear the Four Tops, and then you'd hear uh, Eric Burden and the Animals, yeah. and um, and then maybe a Frank Sinatra song or a Roger Williams song. Right, you right, know, right. Everything was playing. Okay, was this all in Southern California? Uh, yes, Southern California, Northern California. Yeah. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. you're a West Coast. West Coast kid. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a West Coast so, baby. <laughs> so be so here, you know, obviously there's, you know, lots of musicians on the on the West Coast, so obviously in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Was there anybody that that you would go see live and you say, oh, I wanna check? Oh yeah, yeah. Um I I got to see Led Zeppelin at the forum when I was a kid. That was amazing. And um who else did I see? I saw um a uh, band called Bloodwind Pig, which was um, oh. pretty amazing. Uh, Are they the from here? Were they from here? They were an English band, and the guitar player was a guy named Mick Abrams. He okay. was the first guitarist in the Jethro Tull band. Oh, And he okay. was really amazing. He was so far ahead of his time, to me anyway. I mean, yeah. he just stood out, and uh, so I got a chance to see him play. Oh, wow, yeah. And um, I think I know who you're talking about. I mean, I think uh, he's yeah. really... A very great sound, good sound and all that. Yeah. yeah How about cool locally? Were, was there anybody like, were there local people you were listening to? Just my schoolmates, yeah. you know. Um, one of my schoolmates had an older brother who was really an amazing guitar player. And I feel like I'd learned a lot just by watching him. Right. Because it sh sort of showed me what w was possible. Right. Because up until that point, you know, I was, you know, using two fingers to, you know, and, and he was using all four. And I would watch him, and I was like, "How's you know? How's he doing that?" And, oh, okay. and it really, it really, uh, I got obsessed with that, and it really made me dig in a little bit more and start 
to try to understand how music was put together. Right, right. Yeah. So did he show you anything? Did he go like... Uh, well, I would just sit and watch, and I would ask him questions, and he'd kind of make me feel stupid and walk <laughs> away, you know? <laughs> so I, I just persevered on my own. But you saw it. That's, so you saw it was a yeah, visual. Yeah, it's like visual. I saw what was possible. I saw something that was so much more sophisticated than what I was doing or what I could even imagine. So that, that was a huge help in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, I have to tell people there's so many ways to learn. There's so many ways to, uh, to approach the instrument. Uh, that's just the way guitar is. You can, pe you can do visual. You can have teachers. Uh, you can have uh, uh, an AM radio playing. And then it's, yeah. and but you wouldn't necessarily do that with other instruments, but guitar is so you were very visual, right? Seeing people. I, yeah, I would watch. I would watch him. To me, that's amazing because yeah. I if I look at people, that confuses me. <laughs> if I look at people and I'm going like, yeah, that makes no sense. But if if I see it written, mm -hmm. then it makes more. I can almost like visualize the sound. Yeah. Or if I hear it too, if I hear it. But I can't see somebody when somebody's really playing. Mm -hmm. Like it looks like a, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's like that for me too, because it's like you're looking at it backwards. It's a, the backwards point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're looking at it this way, that's one thing. But watching somebody, it's almost like you're looking at it through a mirror. Or something. Right, right. Yeah. Now, but yeah. you you play a style to me, and especially <coughs> with the artists you work with, that's the style and that's the kind of um, guitar playing that's more sophisticated. You know, it's not it's not your blues. It's not your like just playing a because you mentioned pentatonic and a pentatonic is just a, a five note scale. So yeah. what that is, but jazz is a lot deeper than that. So what what in, what brought you to sort of because I know I hear that in your style. So and that's usually people that do that lots of times go to school or have a jazz teacher or have maybe a little bit of a classical teacher there help them with the technique. Yeah. So how did you get into that part of it? Oh, As, well, was that a kid too, where you were listening to yeah, it? Yeah, I was, I was in high school and um, I heard uh, John McLaughlin play oh. for the first time. I got a John McLaughlin record someone turned me on to. And that really opened my head up in terms of how music was sort of put together. What a cool that you could do that. That was a, that's a nice thing to, that your ears were breaking that down. Well, you know, I was like, when I picked up the guitar and started like really getting into it, it was like that was the only thing that really clicked for me. And it was like, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I was just fascinated, not just with the guitar, but just how music's put together. And, right, right. and you know, I just, it really captivated me. It still does. I mean, I'm still fascinated by it, you know, the way things work. And, um, so that's why that when and I, I get, knew that's what I was going to do. So I knew when I got out of high school, I was going to go study music somewhere. So you know? after high school, what what happened? Uh, I got accepted at uh, San Francisco State University, awesome. and um, I studied with. Uh, there were two people there. There's got uh, an alto player named John Handy, mm -hmm. and um, there was a jazz arranging instructor there named Bennett Friedman. And uh, I learned uh, more, you know, more harmony, and I started. That's where I started to learn how to read music. I couldn't read music prior to that. Oh, I didn't okay. even want to. You know, I yeah. was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, but obviously, going to the, that school, you had to you had to put those things in order. Was there a guitar teacher there? No, no. I didn't take lessons uh, at all in San Francisco. I just like listened to records, went to school, did my lessons, and I had to learn piano, and so oh. I'd learn the notes and learn piano and stuff. And uh, I didn't start taking any lessons until I moved to Los Angeles. Okay. And there I studied with a, um, a jazz guitarist named, um, oh God, I can't think of his name right now. I'm so bad with names today. <laughs> um, but he was uh, George Shearing's guitarist, and he was very similar to in style to George. Was he here in Joe Los Pass. Angeles? He was yeah. in Burbank, yeah, in Burbank. And it just his name escapes me right now, but he was a brilliant player and I learned chord melody with him. <coughs> and then later I um through our mutual friend Bobby Carlos, I got introduced to Buzzy Feet and, oh, Buzzy. and I took lessons from Buzzy for a while. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that was helpful. Yeah. So I took some lessons from Buzzy and um, that was helpful. Yeah. Kind of built my confidence up a little bit. Okay. And he was real supportive. 
wrote the So, how did you know Bobby? Bobby was just somebody... Um, I met Bobby through uh, when we were on tour together, because oh, he was okay. our... Our, um, our guitar our, tech. Our guitar tech. That's right, yeah. that's right. And uh, he turned me on to Buzzy. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That was great. It's a, you know, it's a, and he had a, a very interesting style, a lot like a... I mean, I'm not going to say... Uh, a rock, well, well, he's like a rock player. To me, he had the rock sound, mm -hmm. but he also had that sophistication of uh, of jazz harmony and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, like lots of times, uh, you know, when we talk about jazz harmony, it's just so many ways to, you know, if anybody, you know, I rarely talk theory whenever I talk with, because uh, theory <coughs> is, is um, it's sort of how we, how one person decides to learn uh, learn something. It's their own theory. And in guitar, it becomes, I think, theory becomes what makes it easy for you to learn. You know, it's the blocks, and, and it's not your traditional, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a traditional, like you have to take, uh, you know, theory one in college and theory two, which goes through a, a whole bunch of stuff, but guitar has exactly what you're talking about. That thing of listening, mm -hmm. hearing the colors, hearing the sounds, and uh, and then also picking those people that you want to learn. And Buzzy was, uh, he was one of those guys that yeah. was like uh, very, yeah. very Buzz creative. Buzzy's great. But another thing about guitar that I find fascinating too is how you know anybody can pick it up and kind of individualize it. You know, it's like you can always tell a Keith Richards guitar sound. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. Or somebody else, and 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 it's because no one told them how to play. Right, right. They kind of did something on their own and came up with something unique, and and then you hear that, and, and so the guitar kind of, for some reason, the guitar is um, adaptable to different people's points of view about how they're gonna how they're gonna approach it, I guess. Yeah, and, and, and it's. It a self-taught thing a lot of times and very individual and, and, and that comes through you know? you know who ted green is right oh ted, yeah well yeah. ted green it's uh, interesting because it's exactly what you said because he uh uh and he was really known as a great educator and a great t great teacher and put a lot of stuff together and then uh, i when i came from texas i sort of talked to him and we hung out we had a couple of lessons and uh, i asked him well, who's your favorite guitarist and I thought he was going to say Joe Pass, Segovia. And he said, uh, oh, I love what Keith Richards says. <laughs> <laughs> so, cracked, so you're mentioning stuff that's obviously uh, a real important. It's the actual simplicity. Mm -hmm. But that simplicity also being, you know, just, yeah, nobody taught him. But, hey, this is what it is. It's this, yeah, you know? and, and, and it comes through, you know. It's like his sound, it's like he could play... A, an A chord, and no one, his A chord sounds completely different than anybody else's, right, just right, because right. Of the way he plays it, you know, right. it's really amazing. So, what did you it. listen to Keith as a as a guitar player? Oh, sure, I listened to Rolling Stones and uh, listened to like a Cream, and back then anything that Eric Clapton played on, I was listening to it okay. up until. Um, he picked up a Strat, and I kind of lost interest. I oh, really? Gone. Yeah. <laughs> I was really into the, the, the cream thing, the and less Blind Paul, Faith, and all the that. Less, yeah, less the, the heavier guitars, yeah. yeah. But, um, so when you graduate uh, uh, college, did you graduate with a degree or anything? Yeah, um, I'm just a Bachelor of Arts of Creative Arts Interdisciplinary. Okay. <laughs> that was the degree. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And it gave me access to the whole School of Creative Arts, so I was able to... Uh, dabble in the broadcast um, communications and graphics and computer graphics oh, and there it is. kind of just wander around and do a bunch of different things. So when, what year was that? When did you do that? Um, that was from 1975 to 1980. Okay. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. was your 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 time to get your degree and all that. And mm -hmm. so you when you brought that down, I mean, obviously that was up in Northern California. That was in San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so I guess the next thing was gotta gotta hit LA, right? Right. I started playing gigs in San Francisco. Um, and it's funny because you know, up until this point, and even in high school, I was never in bands. I was just uh, playing guitar and s learning on my own. And I didn't want to have a thing to do with being in a band. Oh wow! Because 
you know, they would always be arguing or, oh, the band broke up over the weekend. And I was like, <laughs> I don't need that stuff, you know. The drama, the right, drama, the right. drama. I just, I didn't care for that. I just wanted to, I was just interested in the music. And so finally broke out of my shell, I think, about the second or third year of college and f forced myself down to the Haight-Ashbury Jazz Workshop okay. and started playing with other musicians. And, uh, you know, I was terrified. I was really terrified because I was living in my head and living in my room. And, right, right, right. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, and uh, I, I went in and started playing, and this keyboard player offered me a gig. He goes, what are you doing next Friday? You know, and I was like, nothing. And yeah. he's like, well, I want you to come play with me at this so-and-so. And I was just blown away. Because yeah. I had built it up in my head that, you know, I was going to go in and people were going to laugh at me and I was going to suck and, you know, right, right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it, you know, I just happened to come across the right person, you know, we're still friends. So how were you then? That was, uh, hmm, let me see. It was my third year of college, so that would have been 1978, right? 78. So, like so I was 22, uh, 23 yeah, years old. No, I was... um. Let me see, 18, 19, 20. I was 20. Yeah, 20. Yeah, 20 years old. Wow. Or maybe 21. I must have been just turned 21 right. because oh, right. I was yeah. able to go play in the club. So right, I must right. have that's been right. 21. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty interesting. So that was your, that was your, so that's, I mean, and, and it's not late, but it's usually for a lot of guitar players, usually, um, <clears throat> but that's like in Texas, we're like, get in there and it's your 13 and 14. And, oh, yeah. And you, because that's how I remember doing gigs and was 12 and 13. So you, it, it seems like you waited a bit, you know, to yeah, get... Yeah, I, because, I, you know, just the whole world of playing music was just something I dreamed of. And, you know, I just, I just didn't want to play in bands back yeah. then. And, um because of the, all the infighting and the yeah yeah they're know, like we said the yeah divisiveness yeah. or whatever and you know the loss of direction or whatever and I just wanted to learn about music yeah you know? and then I I got uh, into playing with other people and so when, and you moved down to L A when uh, after college after college yeah so, so it was like uh, eighty eighty one somewhere in there. okay okay yeah and um, yeah, I came down. I was, you know, I had the whole scene in San Francisco wired. I mean, oh. I knew uh -huh. where there was a jam session pretty much 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I knew where I could go and sit in somewhere. Okay. And it was a really, at that time, kind of vibrant s scene there. And it was kind of cool because I knew, you know, I mean, I'd heard about the scene in New York. And this sort of, I thought to myself, well, you know, this is uh, kind of like, you know, New York in the 50s or something. You know, it's kind of okay. like an, an intense little pocket of activity right, you know right, right. but then i came down to la and um i was lost you know i moved down here and it, it took me a minute to like find some musicians to play with and and um and also i was kind of like not into pop music you know oh. at that time i was really kind of like just listening to jazz and and not paying much attention and then uh, my girlfriend at the time kind of hit me to a lot of things that uh, really helped me. Um, a lot of blues records, a lot of rock records, um, and in Asia in particular, that Steely Dan record, that oh, yeah, really yeah. made me realize that, you know, pop music could be cool. Right, you know? right, right. Pop music could be a little bit more than, you know, three chords and I love you, baby. You know, right, it, could, right, right, you know right. it was, it could be more than that. Yeah, and yeah. I saw that and it fascinated me. And, and um, still does, you right? Know, right. Still right. does. <laughs> Do you? So that was Asia. That was like in late seventies, right? Early eighties. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I don't know how long that record was out before I got exposed to it. But right. when that record came, when I heard that record, um, it it blew my mind. Right, it right. really did, and it made me go back and buy all the other Steely Dan right, right. records all the way back. Right, right. And, and that's how but, I discovered Larry Carlton. Yeah, and that's all those that, guys. And those are jazz oriented stuff, yeah. you know. So that's pretty cool. I mean you had a you have a lot of um, sort of almost self taught things and you got the stuff you organized your music, but you just apply you applied it to the guitar, right? Yeah, I mean I, that's I cool. Yeah, that's, when I, I the thing that really the thing that really happened for me was when I figured out and started associating chords with 
modes or or seeing like a bunch of chords on a chord chart and saying and seeing the fact well this is the four and this is the seven and this is the one and, you saw the connections. and they're all in the same key all this oh, yeah. the way that thing was built it's all kind of in the same key yeah. and when i figured that out it was like kind of just so that's why your ear took you to like stuff like a a because steely dan is sophisticated band i mean their harmony is sophisticated yeah, yeah and their solos are sophisticated yeah it's so it was the chords i mean i listened to the chords and i was like i never heard chords like that you know did you like, did you say Carl carlton so did you were you able to go out and see carlton play here in town um not right away um you know i was uh I was working full time a regular job at that time just trying to make ends meet and um, not really playing too much gigs. I was playing in a couple of rehearsal bands, playing in a couple of big bands, right. and you know, trying to get my reading together. And right. when you um, mean big bands, you mean uh, Ron Anthony? That was the guy's name. The the guitar player, okay, the guitar Ron. teacher, the guitar guy that taught me chord oh, melody. Oh, good. So. good. We got Ron Anthony. Ron Anthony. <laughs> yeah. So, so he was a a jazz guy too. Yeah, he was a straight ahead jazz guy, and okay. I he he taught me how to like. To chord melody, and oh. but that was here, right? That was here uh -huh. in California. Yeah, uh huh. In LA, California, yeah. He, he was in Burbank, and I was living down at the beach at the time. Yeah, see that the, cause that those kind of people are the ones that put together that kind of knowledge or put together those tools for the you to use. But they mm -hmm. do; they are lots of times, you know, sophisticated things. That you need to somebody say, "Hey, how do you do it?" So it's Anthony Ron. Ron Anthony. Anthony yeah. Okay. Okay. And that was right, probably right around the time like GIT was getting started, mm -hmm. and um, and I just wanted to stay self-taught. You know, I didn't really want to go through a machine, yeah, like that. Um, and I don't know, that might have been a mistake. I don't know. No, no, no. I mean, you because I mean, you you've been able to do great stuff. So you mentioned about keyboards. So you did also mm -hmm. keyboard playing. How did that, is that just something you, did you apply that to guitar? Because I noticed sometimes people will have different instruments and mm -hmm. then sort of connect what they learned with the instrument, whether it's piano. I know a lot of trumpet players that play and switch over to guitar mm -hmm. or sax players that play. And so yeah, does yeah. that, did the piano help you with any of your... Well, it, I guess it, it did in a way, you know, I had to take piano in college it was mandatory you know you had to take a some every semester you were a music major oh, that's right that's right you had to take a piano class and so you know i i practiced and did that stuff and i just remember it just like hurt my forearm so much i yeah, was do. playing you know but it helped me to kind of understand what chords were first of all you know just at the very basic level you know stacking thirds right right and um because I didn't really look at it that way. When you look at a, a tablature diagram of a <clears throat> of a D seven chord, you're not oh I'm just stacking thirds here. You know, it's, just, yeah, yeah. It, it's more. It looks different. You know, it looks different on P the guitar. Um, uh, yeah, then it looks different on piano than guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the piano is laid out in a line, which is beautiful. You know, it's like all the notes are linear. Oh yeah. You know, and it's like you can so you see those things. Where it's guitar, you know, you got six strings, it's broken two and up. fourths, it's broken up. basically, and it's like, wow, well, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's a little different. Well, to me, the piano is interesting because it's, uh, you have one note here, and you go, you know, like when people go, and they go all the way, and they play all the notes, and it's like playing one string on guitar. Yeah, yeah. So the it's concept is linear, mm -hmm. and so uh, guitar is not linear. Yeah, it's like six keyboards. It's like yeah, it's like six <laughs> confusing little lines, you know. Yeah. So uh, so piano sort of helped you put. Yeah, that. yeah, it did. Uh huh. And um, and it helped me later too because like, um, I started getting interested in doing my own production stuff and right. um, you know, working with uh, electric keyboards, MIDI and sequencers and things like that. Right. And so I was using what I learned. In college, on the piano, and it was helping me to, you know, arrange. put tracks together. Yeah, arrange and stuff. So yeah. that was helpful. Yeah. So that's when you started to, I guess, at that point, and you started to really understand it. It started to click as a, 
an orchestra. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Because <laughs> or- yeah, I mean, I, I don't obviously... know if I understand it yet, but but uh, but but, but, yeah, but you were able you know. to use it on on when you started working with artists, right? Because mm-hmm. would uh, like would you do that with Dr. Dre or something like that? Or well, y- yes, to some degree. A lot of times he would tell me what to play. You know, he he was amazing because. He would come into the studio, and it was almost as if everything was already in his head. Right. And he'd come in, it was just a question of putting it down, right. what he was hearing in his head. And um, that always amazed me. It was like he had a really kind of a clear idea about yeah. what he was doing. And he came up with, he would sing me guitar parts that were amazing. Right, you know, right. And he, he just play an instrument. And know, the cool thing is that in your approach was very similar where you reacted to what it sounded like, you hear it, yeah. and, it and it could go, it could go back to the little radio, the AM radio, listening, mm-hmm. and you're, it's like obviously Dr. Dre said, no, it goes like this, mm-hmm. and then you're like, your years of just listening, yeah, that's an amazing thing. I was talking to Tim Pierce, and Tim was mentioning the same thing. It's like <clears throat> the uh, the radio became he discovered the AM radio, yeah, it, and so it is like a, yeah. it's just like a. That is a school. That is a theory. It's like ear training. <laughs> it was it's, great. It was right there every every night, you know, at bedtime or so every morning when I woke up. When you use the right piano, there. did you use it for the the same way? Like if 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 somebody asked you, so I said, well, let me. Did you switch it over to piano also? Somewhat. Um, it's like if I was working on a track, or if or if somebody if I came in to a situation where I had to put guitar parts down, I would listen to what was going on and kind of analyze it from a point of view of a key center and then um, try to come up with a part that um, that worked with the drums and weaved in through the harmony, you know, so. So a little bit of everything, use the piano, guitar. Yeah. Anything else that you played? Um, no trombone? No trombone, <laughs> no trombone, but, um, <laughs> But back to the big band thing, you know, it's like when you're playing with a piano player and they're playing all these, you know, they're kind of like in any rhythm section, the keyboard is always going to be the dominant member of the harmonic oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. scheme. Right, right. And the guitar player and the guitar is going to be secondary to that. Yeah. So it's always kind of the guitar player's job to fit in to and not get in the way not of the way, yeah. what's happening with the keyboards. Right, right. And... Um, and, uh, you know, I used to play some of those big band charts and it would have like, you know, all these chord changes going on and they were usually dominant seventh chords and there'd be different extensions and and if, if it was came to like, you know, if it was F minor seven to B flat seven and there was going to be a flat nine or a sharp nine or a oh, whatever flat that is, yeah. And, you know, if I didn't do what the keyboard was doing, it would sound horrible. So yeah. I kind of step back from it and just play the tritone. Oh yeah, yeah. Some, you know, just yeah. to not Things be to in his it. way. Yeah. And, I mean, I mean it, and the guitar, even if you hear it in the, in the big band format, they were rhythm. Mm-hmm. You know. They yeah, the Freddie Green. We had the yeah. Freddie Green style. Right. And it was just rhythm. So, so yeah. that's sort of cool. So you did that here also. Well, that kind of taught me something about staying out of the keyboard's way. And so... That helped me f- develop parts when I would work on songs and uh, on recording sessions yeah. to come up with things uh, that tied in to the drums and the bass, but at the same time didn't clash with what was going on in the keyboards and be interesting. And a lot of times it would be you know, like in an R and B tune, you know, it, it, something to kind of push the groove forward. It would a lot of times it wouldn't be chords; it would be single note, a single note, right? Single right, note right. motifs and things like that. A lot of times, right, right. And um, and it was you know at the back of my mind was you know, stay out of everybody's way. You know, kind of find your own little path through all of this right, and right. Get, stay out of everybody else's so, way. So, Doc, would Doctor Dre give you some specific things? Or would any any other artist? Were they ever specific, or they let you? Oh, you know, there was a lot of, you know, I mean, gosh, some sessions. I used to wor- do a lot of sessions for um, for uh, writers that had, like, publishing deals, uh-huh. like with um, MCA or Virgin or whatever. And, you know, these guys would, they'd have great songs, and they'd have 
sometimes they'd have great ideas about what they wanted, and other times they had no idea what they wanted. Yeah, I right. mean, more more often than not, you know, I would come in and hear a song, and I would put down a part that I thought worked and was appropriate for the song, and they'd be like, "No, try something else," and right, we right. no the try typical, something yeah, else. Right. And hours later, it would end up being the first thing I played. Right, you know, right, right. we'd come back to that, and it's like, "Oh, that's the thing." Um, right, you know, and I mean, that happened a lot. You know. Right, right. I mean, that's um, just uh, that thing of working, it's just, working. It, it's and just finding, it's, it's like, I don't know, sort of like building a house, maybe. It's like, you know, you've got to find a part that adds to and stays out of the way of everything else. You know, you just, you don't want it to call attention to itself in that it's blaring out and taking away from the lead vocal or whatever. Right, 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 you don't right. want that. You want something that's in there that adds to without taking away from right 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 i mean i'm and because uh, i yeah. mean at the end i mean i'm uh i mean especially when you listen to the stuff you did with the with the hip different hip-hop artists yeah. it's about putting all these parts together and that's yeah. the times that's what it was and it was not a uh, probably they start with one thing and it's the building and uh so that was that must have been a great time to create right yeah you know and i you know what another thing too um that helped me doing that it was like bi creating and building parts was um, the Cry of Love record, Jimi Hendrix Cry oh, of yeah, Love yeah, record, yeah, yeah. and listening to the parts that Jimi did on like Dolly Dagger. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, that was one of know, my favorites. He layered all these parts together, and it all came together sounding like one really oh, yeah. beautiful part. But it was a bunch of little parts put together. And yeah. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, it was Dolly, a great yeah. record. And yeah. it's such a shame, you know, that... Uh, is we that the one that, right after that? Is know? it that the one that has uh, it's like a pencil picture of him? Yeah, it's sort of scribbled. Yeah, and scribbled, like, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's. I haven't one. heard that many people talk about that album. Oh, that's my favorite Hendrix yeah. record, yeah, just yeah. because that was the record he wanted to do. You know, right, that right. was the record he did in his studio when he built Electric Ladyland. He went in there, and that's the record yeah. he wanted to do. So he's, you know, yeah. he was putting sounds together, putting, you know. Yeah. And wow. we lost him right after that. That's you know? crazy. It was that's like such a shame. Yeah, but so influential. So was Hendrix a, a big influence on you? Yeah, his rhythm playing was. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I wasn't that crazy about his lead playing. Ah. You know? <laughs> just, I don't know why. I, I say the same thing, and I know, I know most people will get upset, but I'm into. I play instruments that are wrist instruments. Mm -hmm. So when I would hear his rhythm, it goes, oh, "What a great rhythm player!" Yeah. Same yeah. thing with. Uh, even people might disagree, but even. Stevie Ray had strong mm -hmm. rhythm, driving yeah, just, rhythms, and, and Hendrix it, had driving rhythms. That yeah, sound. and it was like his time was good. Right. It was just like locked in right with the drums and the bass, yeah. and and it felt you know it's just like you're kind of creating this energy, this machine right, in right. a way. I mean, it's not a machine, but yeah. but you're creating this thing that's kind of generating this energy. You know, it's. Uh, it's it's really cool. I mean, he was a master at that. Yeah, yeah. I and it so. was, on that record, it was like individual parts layered up. You know, he. <laughs> I think he really had a lot of fun making that record. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I know how he, I, he was. He was feeling towards the end. I mean, I don't. I don't know, but I just hear stories of how he wanted to take his music somewhere else. You know. Yeah. And yeah. So, so I didn't. So, is was there any other any other rock players or or guitarists that influenced oh, you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I I used to go through. I would obsess on one guitar player at a time. Okay. Until I couldn't stand them anymore. Basically, <laughs> so it was like Eric Clapton was first, and then um, uh, Jeff Beck a little bit, and right. Peter Green back then, and um, Peter Green with Fleetwood Mac, right? He was with Peter Green. Peter Green. It was. He had a solo record called. It was called The End of the Game, I believe. It had a picture of a leopard in a tree. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. That yeah. record. So, and but he was part of Fleetwood Mac. Was he? It? Well, that was the original band. Was Fleetwood? Yeah. Well, at least one of the bands he played with. I mean, I listened to a lot of those records, and um, you know, ten years after, I remember seeing the Woodstock movie and seeing Ten Years After and going, "Wow, you know, Alvin check Lee. that guy out." Yeah, yeah Alvin Lee. Yeah. That's right. And um, and Santana as right. well, um, and the Who. You know, I listened to all that stuff. I listened to Tommy a lot. You know, I had that record pretty well wired. Right, right. Um, 
But I would listen to one, and you know, I think as for when I kind of discovered John McLaughlin, that's kind of when I departed away from the rock thing, and because he was doing something that was so different and so, you know, like back to that A and B chord thing, and I think, him yeah. and E, and you know, that was just fascinating to me. Well, it was compositional. And looking back, you know, I don't know if I was more interested in how the music was put together or the guitar. I mean, it was. The guitar was my instrument, but I was so fascinated, especially on that Mahavishnu Orchestra record, the first one, the, you know, how things were being put together and, um, and the way they were using rhythmic sequencing and double time and, and I don't know, all those things were yeah. just fascinating. It was, yeah, it was yeah. complicated. Was like, wow, you know, it's like, it can be this, you know, it doesn't have to be just this, it can be this. Yeah. And then from there, it was like I just kind of discovered Miles Davis, and because right. um, he was with Miles, he played yeah. with Miles. Uh huh. His first record was um, in the United States was with Miles. It was yeah. called In a Silent Way, and that was it was interesting, yeah. cool. That was a really interesting time um, in jazz because you know guys like Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea were starting to use the Rhodes piano and Mini Moogs. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, you know, sounds. it was like all this different stuff, <laughs> different sounds, and. Yeah. And Miles was playing his trumpet with a wah wah pedal. Yeah, uh, right. it was like all this. You know, and Miles cool is stuff. It, Miles know? is always electric to me. Even when he was acoustic, I said when he was acoustic, he's always sounded more electric. So yeah, he he was amazing. You know. Um, well, that's you know, I mean, I mean, I, it's sort of interesting because we've known each other for a long time, <laughs> but we never talked music. We yeah. talked, and we were just doing a gig together, and yeah, you know, yeah. and so. Uh, it's interesting. Well, we had a lot of good times. Yeah, a lot of good times. Uh, you know. Yeah, and but, a lot of interesting stories to yeah. tell. Yeah, and one of these days we'll we'll talk about those stories, <laughs> but not now. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to thank you, man, for having you know for, you know, because I just uh, for me and then you know for people that listen, it's a it's a story of what got us going. Lots of times the story, it's a simple one. You know, it's not a you know there's a. Uh, on guitar, it's sort of a nice thing that we, you know, it can be just, uh, you know, a simple thing like an AM radio. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's that's not true of a, of a other instruments. Say like a, if you were like playing oboe, you wouldn't say, oh yeah, that AM radio really inspired my oboe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> which think is that, so. Which is like, yeah, it's just like for guitar though, because it's an instrument of the people you know it's yeah. a folk instrument and you can take it wherever you want to yeah that's why there's no you know it's it's uh, it, the education comes from all over you know yeah yeah definitely and it's also you know this moment in time too you know it's like from the 60s 70s 80s you know this is a really rich time yes for yeah. music it's yeah. just amazing and, and great for guitar i know right now we're just through a, a, a period where you don't hear it as much you know right and you don't hear guitar and so it's a little upsetting but i know it's maybe a little bit where they it cycles you it know does guitar cycle. cycle in and out and yep. so there's just a moment where it doesn't but people like it i mean i'm hearing more and more people ask me well how do you do that or that song, mm -hmm. can, can we do this song? And because my my background and the stuff I do right now is uh, it's just teaching people, and you know, it's uh, related to people that really don't know about music, but they're asking for those old sounds. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, hope there that guitar comes back <laughs> yeah, oh, <I> <laughs> a little it, more it, in pop. I think it you know? will. And it will country's always, always there. there. So yeah, it will always be there. So. Um. Because it is, like you said, it is the, the instrument of the people. You yeah, know, I think you so. can literally take one, and take it down to the beach, and sit on the sand <laughs> and strum away, or in front of a campfire, or jam with your friends in the garage and that's drive right. your neighbors yeah. crazy. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you know. That's it. It's, that's the thing. Is it was the thing. It's um, you know, I just want more people to make bands, <laughs> more, <laughs> more. You know, so I mean, it, and it will happen. You know, so. But thank you, thanks so much for. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, yeah, I, really I know it. it's nice to. Thanks for thinking of me. Yeah, to, it's yes. nice to connect and uh, and to and I get to learn, you know. So yeah. Something. So, mm -hmm. all right. So I guess do you have, you have a you do have um. I guess a website, right? Do you have a website? Uh, I, I do, but it's down right now. Okay, we'll that's back. right. Yeah. But then uh, is there uh, so we get, people can check out your bio? Do you have something online, right? 
Well, it will be shortly. Yeah, just uh, it'll okay. be michaelsimsmusic.com. Okay, and, okay. Uh, it'll be up there. Okay. It was up. It's down. Now it's back. Okay, okay. So I'll I'll, I'll post. I'll put everything on the on the description. Yeah. Okay, so. great. All yeah. right, buddy. Well, thank you so much. Thanks thank for you. hanging out with me. Oh and, uh, man, yeah, thank you for awesome. hanging out with me. I yeah, mean, yeah. This is awesome. It was good. So it was so good to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. it's been years, huh? <laughs> <laughs>